Hi everybody. Thank you for joining me for Level 3 Good Shepherd Orientation. My name is Claire Kwiatkowski. I have 24 families in my two uh, Level 3 classes. And most of my families I know, but a couple are new to me. So let me just tell you a little bit about me if you don't know me. Um, I have been in this parish for 30 years. And I've been a catechist in PSR for 10 years and the last 15 years in Good Shepherd. And I've taught all four levels um, of Good Shepherd. I like level three and level four. Those are my favorites. Um, and I'm a retired speech and language pathologist and a reading tutor, I just retired recently. So I really do enjoy uh, working with the kids and being with them in Atrium. Um, that said, this is gonna be a really odd year because Good Shepherd is not the kind of program that translates very well to online. And I'm gonna be doing my classes pre-recorded. Uh, you can get those videos um, through the Cat Parish website. That's just the way I'm, I particularly wanna do it. Um, and actually this year, I have two different lists of lessons. We have two different cycles, cycle A and cycle B. And this year we're in cycle B, which actually some of those lessons do lend themselves to some home kind of activities. This year, children will be making timelines, they'll be making a booklet. There are several things that, that we were able to adjust so that they could do things at home. Um, we do a lot of work this year in Good Shepherd on something called the plan of God, which is my second lesson this year. It's a beautiful lesson, it takes about a half an hour to go through, and then several lessons related to that. So, but the first lesson I'm gonna give in two weeks is going to be on the Bible. And I'll tell you more about that in a second. We're gonna be going twice a month. So after this orientation in two weeks, you'll have um, another video. What I usually do is I'll send you out an email with a link to that, to that video, tell you what it's about, if the kids need to do anything before they watch the video. And I'm just gonna ask you that you give your child a set time that they can sit and watch these videos. And I would really, really appreciate it if you could sit and watch them with them. They're gonna be a half an hour long or so, um, not, not terribly long, sometimes shorter, but I really want you there because typically in a dynamic atrium session, we would do the lesson and we ask questions and we talk and it can go on for quite a long time but I won't have that access to their kid, your kids and their thoughts and ideas. So please feel free to stop the video if I ask a question and, and talk to them about what's going on and if they have an answer. I appreciate that. I gave you a folder which you would have picked up uh, Sunday for each child. And what I put in here were materials either as part of the immediate lesson or as an extension to the lesson. Let me show you what, how it's kind of set up. The first part of the folder is essentially the first part of the year. Uh, the middle section is a Bible extension. I'll talk about that in a second. And then the back part of the folder is essentially the, the end of the year. Um, not every lesson has material, but most of them do. There's also a card in there from, um, this is from the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd website. It's just a blank card, it's just a beautiful card. And I thought they could put it either on their prayer table if they have one or uh, on their bedside table or in front of the monitor when they're doing their lesson. It's just to kind of remind them that he's with us. I always start the year by talking to the children and telling them Jesus' words in Matthew, where two or more of you are gathered together in my name, there I am among you. And I truly believe that. And I think at this year, especially during this pandemic, we really need to rely on his his guidance and his presence. So that's why it's glad, I'm, I'm glad that you would be able to sit with them um, while they do have these lessons. The first lesson they're gonna get is a Bible extension work. If you have fifth graders, they did this last year, so they're kind of familiar with what to do. And I'll tell you why I'm doing this. The, a lot of kids walk into level three and they're kind of familiar with the Bible, but not really navigating it is difficult for them. 
So I'm going to give them a kind of a reintroduction lesson to what the Bible is and the books of the Bible, um, just how you kind of hold it and, and get through it. And then I gave them um, passages that they need to look up and also a book that they can write them. I want them to write down the verse, the chapter and verse, and then write down a copy, whatever they found in terms of the passage. I went through the Bible and found passages that were short, simple, that the children could grasp, um, had an interesting idea, or they were topics that they were familiar with. And I'm doing this for several reasons. One, to get them more comfortable with navigating through a Bible. Two, giving them more time with the Bible, just to find the interest and excitement in looking at a Bible. And third, if they find a passage that really speaks to them, then they can make it into a prayer card or they can make it into a bookmark. And I actually included um, two blank bookmarks in there that they can use. And on the back of this, I put in um, cardstock and paper and pictures, whatever I could come up with that they could use to make their own prayer card. Um, some children do not like to write, and I heard that a couple of times. If they don't, then perhaps they find the passage and you write it down. It's important that, they, that they're navigating through the Bible, so if they do it, perfect, and you can write down the passage. Um, or take turns doing that. But I just really want them to spend time with the Bible. Each lesson that I have in here would be labeled, the title of it. And most of them are like good to go. There's pieces in it that, I, that I've cut out. If there's uh, taping or cutting involved, I would let you know ahead of time. That's what they need to do. Um, some of them are just slight extensions so that they could just have something to do while they're listening to me and they're looking at some of the same material that I have. Um, some of them are just simply some ways to color and kind of create artwork. Um, I also wanted to let you know that we're going to be doing some community service projects, which is really going to be interesting because it's hard to do when we're not together. The first one will be be, um, actually both of them will be related to St. Vincent de Paul. I have just a real soft heart, place in my heart for St. Vincent de Paul. So the first one is, um, they usually do a walkathon, a walk for the poor, at the end of September every year. And this year, St. Vincent de Paul obviously can't do it because of the pandemic. But even in years past, I have taken my kids out to the football field and, you know, we walked a couple times to, to raise money. So what I was thinking was to, sit down with your child and see if you can work out a way that they can earn um, some money for the poor by walking. Maybe it's taking the dog for a walk five times or up and down the street or ride their bike or walk as a family and everybody contributes a dollar. If you do that, collect that money, put it in an envelope, mark it St. Vincent de Paul, walk for the poor and put it in the basket at church and th they'll get it. Um, just let me know send me an email that tells me how much money you've put in and then I can kind of compile it and let St. Vincent de Paul how much, know how much money our uh, classes have done. The second one will be the, at Christmas time. I'm sure you're familiar with the, the uh, Christmas scrolls. In the past, each one of my classes has adopted a St. Vincent de Paul family at Christmas time and they gave me all the scrolls and I passed them out, every child got one. And then they brought the presents in and we wrapped them all together, put them in a gigantic box. And then on top of that, we made a fleece tie blanket for each member of the family. The kids love the blankets, they love making the blankets. So this year I can't make 24 blankets, but what I thought I would do since I have eight fifth graders is if I can work it out with St. Vincent de Paul and get enough two families to equal eight people, then I will have each one of my fifth graders make a blanket themselves. I'll get you all the all the information and, and the material um, closer to Christmas time. So hopefully that's that's the plan. Um, anyway, it's going to be an interesting year. If you have any questions or concerns, please uh, feel free to email me 
or call me. Um, I forgot to put my phone number on the email, but I'll do it again. I'd be happy to talk to you. And if your kids need to talk for any reason, if things are really getting to them and they need to talk to somebody and they want to call me, let them call me. I'd be happy to talk to them. If you wouldn't mind letting me talk to your children for a few minutes, I just want to say hello and tell them how, how the year is going to go. Thanks so much. Hi guys. Hi to my 24 children. My name is Claire. Some of you I know, some of you from last year. And I just wanted to say hi to you and tell you a little bit about this year. But first I want to say hello to my fifth graders. Alec Barton, Eric, Keegan, hi. Salvatore, hello. Adam Lowry, hello. Lila, hello, Lila Sabo. Hi Tristan. And Matthew, you're my new fifth grader, but hello, Matthew. Then I have several children who I know your family's name because I've seen your brothers and sisters before, but you're new to me. So I want to say hi. I'm going to say hi to Julia because you're the sister of Ella. Tell Ella I said hi. Ryan, Ryan, your sister Catherine, tell her I said hello. Sarah, hi, Sarah. Would you say hi to David to me and your dad because your dad helped me last year? Uh, hi, Peyton. Would you say hi to Lila for me? I remember Lila. Anna, can you say hi to Jonathan for me? Nice to meet you, Anna. Mia, hi Mia. Would you say hi to Jake for me? Jake's my rainbow man. Hope he's doing okay. Hi, Teresa. Could you say hi to Maria for me? Because I remember Maria. Evelyn, hi Evelyn. Would you say hi to all your brothers and sisters for me? <laughs> That's the k Touch family. And Zoe, can you say hi to Maggie for me? I miss Maggie. And then I have seven brand new families that I have not met before. So if I haven't met you already, hi Gianna, hi Brennan, Callie, hi Jacob, hi Adam, hi Corbin, and hi Benjamin. Quite a group. Boys and girls, would you mind doing me a favor? Take your folder, and if you open it up, you'll see this prayer. Is it okay if we do this together? This is a prayer about the pandemic. You ready? It says, when this is over, this pandemic, may we never again take for granted a handshake from a stranger, full shelves at the store, conversations with neighbors, a crowded theater, Friday night out, the taste of communion, a routine checkup, the school rush each morning, coffee with a friend, the stadium roaring, each deep breath, a boring Tuesday, life itself. When this ends, may we find that we have become more like the people we wanted to be, more like the people we were called to be, more like the people we hoped to be, and may we stay that way better for each other because of the worst. Isn't that pretty? Guys, I'll tell you more about your about the folder as we go. Um, but the first the first lesson you're going to have involves the thing right here in the middle. This is all about the Bible. And the second uh, lesson you're going to have involved <laughs> involve this little piece of paper in this plastic bag. So I'll tell you about that coming up. I just want you to know this is going to be a very different year. This is not how we normally do atrium. Atrium is such a wonderful place to be. Um, and I know the pandemic has caused a lot of craziness in your in your lives, I'm sure. This summer was odd and school is, I'm sure, difficult and, or different. Um, but you know, regardless of what's going on around us, Remember what Jesus said. He said, where two or more of you are gathered together in my name, there I am among you. And I know, boys and girls, he's here right now. So if you're sitting with mom and dad and you're watching the, the video, he's there. He's there listening to us. He's our hope and our salvation. So we need to remember that and to pray together. So when we pray together as a community, even if we're online, 
and he's, I still know that he's present and he cares and he loves us. One more thing I want you to, to, to tell you before I let you go is community service. I told your mom and dad that we're gonna do a, a community service project for the St. Vincent de Paul Society. They help people that are, um, are poor or need help with paying bills and so forth. Uh, the first thing is a walkathon. It's gonna be anytime in the end of September. I want you to, to talk with your parents about a way to raise some money by walking, walking your dog, riding your bike, walking in the neighborhood, um, and then collect that money for every, for every block you walk, maybe mom will give you a dollar, whatever. Collect that money, put it in an envelope and take it to church and St. Vincent de Paul will get that. And I thank you for that. The second is the Christmas scrolls. Do you know at Christmas time at church where they have the Christmas scrolls and you open them up and there's a, somebody asks for a gift? Every year in Good Shepherd, I, in my classes, we adopt a family. We, we get all the scrolls for that one family. We, we, everybody buys a present. We put them all together, wrap them up in a big box and give them to the family. And we also make each family member a blanket. Well, this year we can't put all of our gifts together, but that's okay. I'm gonna, we're gonna adopt a family. I'll send you a scroll, go out with your pa parents and find that gift, wrap it up, take it to church, leave it in the gathering area and St. Vincent de Paul will pick them up. But for my fifth graders, I have eight fifth graders and guys, if I can, talk to St. Vincent de Paul and get the right number of family members, I'm going to ask each one of you to make a fleece tie blanket. Would you be willing to do that? I'll get you all the material. All you have to do is make it a bit big. You know how big they are. So I figured you'd like to do that. So fingers crossed. I hope that's what's going to happen, but I'll let you know. So boys and girls, thank you so much for your time. Um, I'm going to just end with a, a, a quick sign of the cross in the Our Father, and then I'll see you in two weeks. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Bye, guys. I'll see you in two weeks.